the Navy Hurricanes have the privilege of presenting colors at ceremonies and competitions around the county and the state of Florida. Please rise and place your hand over your heart as we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Thank you all for being here with us today. Just before I pray, I would like for us to observe a moment of silence as we recognize the memory, the life and legacy of the wife of one of our dear Rotarians, Betsy Goodman. May we pray. Lord, we are forever grateful for this day we pray especially for those who are going through periods of suffering and anguish. We also recognize the valiant efforts and commitments of all those who have sworn or affirmed to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Bless now this time that we spend together. It is for your sake and for your glory, we pray. Amen. Welcome, Rotarians. Join me as we sing, My Country, Tis of Thee. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. You may be seated. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Rotary Club of Gainesville meeting for this Tuesday, November 10th, 2020 our special Veterans Day Rotary meeting. For those of you watching on Zoom this afternoon or whenever you're watching on YouTube, we ask that you please register your participation by sending an email to info at rotarygainesville.org. Again, that's rotary, info at rotarygainesville.org. Now, if we have any guests here, members, you with your guest, please stand. And Don Bugos has the microphone to bring to you. Introduce yourself and your guest. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. I am Deborah Newell and my guest is Susan Whitman. She is retired um, editor for uh, one of the professors at the university um, doing textbooks and other related books. And she now works part time at Publix. So you might hear and wave at her in the line. And she also is a volunteer in the community and with the church. Hello, Rotarians, Melanie Shore. My guest today is Shawnee Walker, our, our mortgage originator for Drummond Community Bank, and she is the president of her Rotary Club in Lake City. Welcome, Shawnee. Welcome to all of our visitors today. Next, we have one announcement from a fellow Rotarian via Zoom, TJ Pichet. TJ, take it away. Hi, everybody. Uh, next Tuesday, the 17th, one week from today, we'll be doing the labeling for the Dictionary Project. It's going to be 6 p.m. at the Matheson Museum on East University. I'll be sending out an email um, with the information so that you can sign up. But if you're interested in helping out, we'd love to have you. Uh, that's Tuesday, November 17th at 6 p.m. at the Matheson. Thank you. 
Thank you, TJ. Up next, please welcome to the podium your president, Matthew Braddy. Thank you. Hurry up. Look, listen to that. Great applause and then a comic out there. Thank you all very much. Good to see so many today. Um, I look forward to the day that we can see even more, but uh, appreciative for this opportunity. Also wanted to note, uh, just popped into the Zoom, is uh, past District Governor Mike Dara. And uh, welcome to our meeting today. Uh, Mike is helping many other clubs in the district try to look at a hybrid format. And um, they've really taken note to the hard work so many in this club has put forth to make this format happen. So um, any feedback you have back to Mike, he would probably appreciate as well because they're looking at, uh, you know, the good, the bad, the pros, the cons, and share all those things with other clubs and other members. So, uh, again, just thank you for everybody making this happen, and thank you for being here, uh, Mike. Uh, thank you. You know, Veterans Day, we tried our best, you know, to replicate the past. I've always loved when the color guard comes in, and so thank you for uh, Tom Capella who is uh, introducing our speaker a little bit later, organizing and recording that. So at least we still have that flavor. And thank you to the GHS High School, um, Gainesville High School Color Guard for recording and putting that together uh, to make this as special as possible. Speaking of Veterans Day, thank you, David Nichols, for reminding me that today is the official Marine Corps birthday. And uh, so that's today. And then we'll honor officially Veterans Day tomorrow. As Kevin mentioned, please continue to remember Buddy Goodman and family and the loss of Betsy. I know many of you knew Betsy as well and a friend to many and, uh, and, and, and Buddy, just a tremendous part of this club and community and just a great loss. So that said, please continue to remember many other Rotarians and family members that are dealing with challenges, kind of an unspoken type thing, but there's a lot out there. Uh, there's a lot of need and uh, we are a family and just continue to, to remember all of our members and, and their family the best we can. Uh, a, a shining light, a newer member back in March, so not able to see a lot since, you know, it was right there pre-COVID, uh, Nisha Copra. Uh, she welcomed a new baby boy a few weeks ago. So uh, some, some shining light and uh, look forward to maybe getting a picture of that or hearing from her in the future about that. So if you did not see the big bus or you have not heard, thank you, Craig Carter, for arranging. But today we have a blood drive. So if you have not in, already and you're able to hang around after today's meeting, um, there's always a need for blood. And they're definitely during this time has... Uh, has been no different than any other and, and maybe more so a shortage. And so if you can, please do that. This Saturday at 8 a.m. So now this was something we tried to do back in August and for, for valid COVID reasons, we were not able to, but we we're gonna do some work at Twilliger. Had about 20 people signed up. Right now I have about six. The weather is so much more better right now. So please, if you can, it'll be a much more pleasurable work day. Um, when we say painting, it's going to be painting these columns for the students so that they have kind of a, a color scheme and they do activities with it. And um, when we say landscape and cleaning up, it, uh, trust me, it's really a, a light load. It's not going to be too, too bad, but it'll be a great opportunity to be out there uh, with fellow opportunities safely outdoors, um, helping the school, helping the community. And we will wrap up in plenty of time to, to rest, catch a nap, whatever you may need to do, or be ready to, uh, you know, pregame and, and before the night game. So please, if you can, see that link and do that. So without further ado, I appreciate Tom Capella. He organized today's speaker and organized the first part of the meeting. And so at this time, I will turn over to Tom and allow him to introduce our speaker. Thank you all. I think I'm now unmuted, uh, and uh, thanks again, Matthew. Um, at the outset, as our president indicated, I kind of apologize for not being able to have the usual Veterans Day program we're used to having, uh, used to seeing Rick Fabiani march out in his 
uh, military uniform that still perfectly fits him and things like that. But, uh, and as speaking of Rick, um, I'd like to uh, thank him and Tom Hennessy who were really instrumental in um, arranging with Gainesville High School to have uh, the virtual color guard. So thanks again. Um, <clears throat> but it is a pleasure to introduce Tom Wisniewski as I have known Tom for uh, 20 years or more. We worked together in the past and uh, as many of you know, he succeeded me as director of the North Florida South Georgia VA healthcare system. Just a little bit about Tom and our healthcare system. Uh, the VA healthcare system, North Florida South Georgia healthcare system is a very huge organization. It encompasses two medical centers, 46, a 45 bed domiciliary, three large multi-specialty outpatient clinics at Tallahassee, Jacksonville and the villages, 11 community-based outpatient clinics. And these are spread out all around North Florida. When I was director, I used to like to say our, organ our system runs from Valdosta in the north to the villages in the south and from uh, uh, west of Tallahassee Hassie in the West and thank God for the Atlantic Ocean on the East because it can't grow any further that way. But it, it is a huge organization. It has a budget of in excess of $1.4 billion. We treat 137,000 veterans and uh, we have a very huge research program that I know Tom will speak a little bit about. Tom is in charge of directing all of this. And before coming to Gainesville, uh, Tom has had a long and illustrious career in the VA, uh, both as a, a chief operating officer and a CEO. His most previous assignment was a director, director of the VA Gulf Coast Veterans Healthcare System, where he spent three years there. And I know he oversaw a huge building program of uh, in excess of $300 million. So with uh, no further ado, I'd like to turn this over uh, to Tom Wisniewski and look forward uh, to hearing his remarks. Thank you, Tom. And um, uh, it's a, a great honor and privilege to be asked to present to um, your Rotary Club uh, today um, on the day before Veterans Day with the main topic of celebrating Veterans Day. And uh, as Tom mentioned, he and I uh, go back a number of years. And I, I think that we were both in, in uh, uh, at least I know for me, I had a color in my hair and, and a bit more of it uh, way back then. And um, I remember, I'm gonna tell a tale out of, of school on, on Tom. We had, uh, so I remember standing with Tom and my boss, Brian Hecker and myself, and, and we were talking about our boss, who was a gentleman by the name of Dr. Larry Biro. And um, we were talking about all the things that uh, we had to do and were required to do. And Dr. Biro had a habit of, of filling uh, notebooks. He had spiral notebooks and he was left-handed and he just wrote and wrote and wrote everything that happened in our healthcare systems. And um, at that time, he, Tom was the director at the Atlanta VA Medical Center, and Dr. Biro was the, the Vision director for Vision 7, of which Tom's hospital and my hospital was, was in Vision 7. And so we were talking, and, and, and Tom said, it wasn't that Dr. Biro wrote everything in the book. It was that he remembered everything in the book when it came time to do our performance evaluations. So uh, Dr. Biro was, uh, was a very uh, good boss, and uh, we certainly learned a lot from him. And so I was lucky to have the opportunity to, to work and, and know uh, Tom and, and, and his wife, Darlene, uh, many years ago. And um, I've, I've benefited through my career from his, his uh, guidance and mentorship. So thank you, Tom. A, a Gold Star Memorial uh, Park that we, we put in play with the Garden Club of Gainesville. 
And um, we were certainly uh, appreciative that they asked us uh, to participate and install that, uh, that garden. And, um, and that's uh, uh, to well, my right of that, uh, of the Gold Star Memorial uh, Park is a picture of the Fisher House. And so I wanted to thank the Veterans Committee of the Rotary Club for inviting me to reflect and celebrate uh, Veterans Day and to provide updates on the North Florida, South Georgia Veterans Health System. And um, uh, we really acknowledge and appreciate the Rotary's work in uh, promoting education and the development of citizens within our community because that's so very important so that we have a, a dynamic and, and vibrant community. And there's really special thanks to the Rotary Club for its contributions and uh, leadership and vision to bring the Fisher House uh, to the Gainesville campus, to the Malcolm Randall VA Medical Center. And you certainly have been very, very supportive uh, to do that. Um, you've donated um, about $46,000 from your Wild Game Feast event um, a number of years ago, and, and that money was used to build out the Fisher House. And you've also sponsored a Fisher House golf tournament. Um, and I believe uh, over a period of about four years, about $20,000 was raised and, and contributed back to the Fisher House for the house endowment. And um, these contributions and the vision to bring the Fisher House to the Malcolm Randall campus so that veterans families are, are close to their loved ones when their loved ones are in the, in the hospital uh, being treated for a variety of different things. It, it provides, as you might imagine, for those, for those of you who haven't been there and those of you who have, it's very comfortable lodgings. It's a beautiful and relaxing setting and it's just steps away from the medical center. And one of the great things about it is there's no charge to the families for their stay. And many of our patients' families are, are um, not financially well off. And uh, even those that are having the Fisher House there and, and uh, having it uh, available for families free of charge certainly uh, relieves some uh, financial anxiety that uh, the loved ones of veterans may have. Um, about payment of a, of a hotel bill. And so we're really very grateful uh, for, for your engagement and your involvement and your generosity. The Fisher House opened in uh, July of 2014. And through that period of time, we've served about 6,400 families um, uh, who have resided at the house and uh, gone and visited their loved ones. And uh, certainly, as we all know, COVID has changed um, our approaches and, and we had to limit the, the number of families that, that came in uh, to the house so that we had appropriate physical distancing rules. And even though we, we did that, there was about 235 families who we've served uh, during that uh, time period from March until, until today. Sorry for the technical difficulties here. So uh, the topics that I'm gonna be talking about are our health system updates, um, COVID, uh, our Gainesville primary care and mental health clinics, which we're very fortunate to have approval to build and uh, it, that's being in process and also Veterans Day. And so um, as you can see by the the picture of the map and, and Tom talked a little bit about how large we are and it's certainly um, a, a large um, what we call our catchment areas there's 31 counties in uh, North Florida and 19 in South Georgia that we um, have the privilege of taking care of, of veterans um, who reside in that particular area um, we employ across our healthcare system uh, we employ about 5,800 staff 
And uh, we're one of the largest VA medical centers in the, in the country. And as Tom mentioned, there's a number of, uh, of healthcare facilities that, that we have. And um, the VA has a complexity rating system, ranking system, and uh, the North Florida, South Georgia system is the third most complex of, out of all the hospital systems that VA employs. And uh, most recently, we signed an agreement with the Naval Air Station up in Jacksonville to provide inpatient uh, beds in the Jacksonville market uh, for veterans. And um, they had some unused capacity. And so we're going to be um, sharing uh, 10 inpatient beds, what we call med surge beds, and then four ICU beds. And uh, we will be working to use their um, ORs. They have some capacity in their OR operating rooms uh, that we're going to be utilizing as well. And um, we um, have a large population of, of homeless veterans across our system as as um, many facilities do across the country. But in, we do a point in time survey in February. And in February, there was about 470 homeless veterans um, and within our entire catchment area. And about 125 of those uh, reside in Gainesville and Alachua and Put the Putnam County areas. And uh, we have a very large uh, group of uh, social workers who um, go out into the woods to, to build trust with veterans to get them to leave the woods and uh, uh, come and reside in some safe housing that, that we uh, have in collaboration with the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And uh, right now, we have about 1,500 veterans and their families under lease, meaning that we, we provide uh, safe, affordable housing through this uh, relationship that we have with, um, with HUD. And uh, that's pretty significant so that families have the opportunity to be off the street and to be in safe, uh, safe affordable housing. We also have relationships with um, what's called SF, SSVF, and which means uh, Supportive Services for Veterans Families. And it's a relationship that we have with community groups across our catchment area. In Gainesville, one of our largest partners is Meridian uh, Healthcare. And um, across our healthcare system, we fund those organizations to the tune of about $20 million to provide services to, to families and children that veterans have that they otherwise could not, could not afford. And we have these relationships because there's certain things that the VA can do and others that, um, that we can't do. And so we're very grateful that we have these remarkable relationships with other community providers. Um, one of the things that happened through an, an act called the CARES Act is that we were able to increase emergency housing vouchers so that immediately if someone needs uh, a home, uh, or housing, we're able to provide that assistance immediately so that uh, there's no waiting and if someone uh, may um, uh, be living on the street, we can get them immediately into housing. And it, um, it was very helpful during our challenges with COVID that we have this because we can put uh, veterans into hotels and, and get them off the streets. And it's really much safer to have people in a controlled I'll call it controlled environment uh, where they where they can set their own uh, physical distancing rules rather than having people uh, together uh, less than six feet six feet apart. Um, we have a very large research program and, and it's funded and we have over 190 um, active research projects and uh, for which we received about seven million dollars in what we call our fiscal year 20. Um, some of the things that uh, are very important that as we look at what's going on in the world is that um, um, we have some of our researchers that are involved in studies, COVID studies, uh, one of which is the convalescent plasma study that we were engaged in right from the beginning. 
uh, where we were studying uh, what happened when we gave plasma from from veterans to others um, who had the COVID who had the COVID illness to see if there was some impact on that. And uh, right now we've been approved and we, we are uh, working to enroll um, veterans and others um, into the Janssen vaccine study. And so um, we were actively providing vaccine uh, to enrollees and some of the vet, some of the veterans and others that are that are taking the vaccine. The way it's set up is that it's a controlled study where one half are taking the vaccine and the other half is taking a placebo. And so we're we're really grateful that we were recognized as a, a research organization to to uh, be involved and engaged in that and to and to find a path forward with a vaccine so that we can go back to some semblance of what a normal life we hope to have um, after we, we are able to control the virus. And so um, one of the, some of the things that uh, you'll see here in this picture is the, um, the large building in the upper left-hand corner is our um, bed tower at the Malcolm Randall facility. And Tom had a, Tom Capello had a lot to do with the establishment and the planning and the funding and, and the building of, uh, of the bed tower. And we're certainly uh, grateful that, that we have that. Um, um, over to the right hand side, we have a, a picture of our uh, first Vietnam veterans annual motorcycle ride and a program that we've we put on to recognize and uh, uh, celebrate the contributions that Vietnam veterans had um, to our system and, and to the United States. And it was very um, moving program because we had a virtual wall uh, that was in at the uh, Veterans Park off of off of Tower Road and um, veterans, Vietnam veterans were able to come in and, and see who they uh, what units they were in, and, and uh, there was a number of individuals who learned that some of the people that they were in units with um, didn't die during during the Vietnam War, and for some it was very um, it was very gr gratifying to, for them to learn that that uh, death did not uh, come to their comrades. And so, um, on the uh, lower left-hand corner is our honor center. And as Tom mentioned, that's a 45 bed, what we call a domiciliary, uh, where we, we treat um, veterans uh, for a variety of different issues. And then they graduate and they go out and become and continue to be pr productive members of our society. And then um, over uh, to the right is another picture of the Fisher House. And so we have um, a lot of great services within, within our system. Um, like cardiology, we have a, probably one of the best cardiology programs in, in VA. And our, um, our chief, what we call our chief, our leader of the, our medicine service line, um, Dr. Richard Schofield, he is the, the head uh, cardiology uh, uh, leader in VA. So he has a dual role between his services at Malcolm Randall in North Florida, South Georgia, and um, what we call our central office or our headquarters. And um, uh, there's been a number of research uh, projects that have happened and uh, one most recently that occurred was uh, they're making comparisons between uh, the outcomes of patients that have received some certain cardiovascular procedures in VAs and then comparing them to their private sector. And um, um, there certainly has, the research has demonstrated that um, the VA has uh, lower mortality um, outcomes than, than the private sector. And we always feel that the care that we provide to veterans is as good or better than in um, comparable uh, private sector organizations. And um, so we have... Uh, really a, a lot of uh, excellent uh, clinicians 
who um, are actively engaged in a variety of different different programmings. We're what's called a, a tertiary care facility, and um, we have um, our relationship with uh, the University of Florida, which is right across the street. And it's so very important because we have docs um, who work in both places, both sides of the street, as it were. And so we're able to share and provide um, learning uh, tidbits from, from both sides, from the private sector world and also from VA so that uh, veterans receive the best care possible. And this is a picture of our Gold Star Memorial. And uh, we were approached by the Gainesville Garden Club to um, install a, a garden. Uh, they had previously tried to um, have it uh, accomplished on uh, Route 75, but uh, that uh, for whatever reason didn't happen. And so when Fran Maris came and talked to me about it, I immediately said yes. And uh, we built this beautiful garden and it's uh, um, outside the front of our hospital. And, and um, as you may remember from the, the picture of the bed tower, there's lots of glass that looks out onto Archer Road and in, onto this garden. And so veterans have an opportunity um, to, to look out uh, onto that garden and, and reflect. And there's a, a significant number of Gold Star families in, uh, in the Gainesville area in Alachua County and surrounding areas. And um, it was an opportunity for those families to, to have a tribute to their, to their loved ones, to their son or, or daughter who ha had died in, in service of our country. And so we wanted to have a, a solemn and sacred place on our grounds for, for the patients and families, um, uh, both uh, for those who come in remembrance and those who are receiving their care within the facility. Um, this particular um, information is comes from um, a site called Hospital Compare. And um, there's lots of stuff that's available on online now to identify um, medical centers about the quality of care that's provided or what patients say about the quality of care. And so this particular slide um, shows that um, our healthcare system in, in what uh, patients said about their experience with our system, they gave us four stars. And uh, when we look at uh, some competitors that we have in the local market, um, uh, we scored um, higher than, than they did. And uh, so this, this star rating highlights the hard work that we do, and not only in the care delivered, but how we deliver it um, in the cleanliness of our facilities and the customer service that we provide uh, to veterans and their families. Uh, as you might uh, recognize, that's a, a picture of um, our, our nemesis, the uh, COVID-19 virus. And, and that has really driven a lot of the work that we've done since March and, until now. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, plannings and actions that we've taken across our healthcare system to, um, to identify uh, veterans and employees that have uh, uh, the COVID virus. We've learned that approximately 40% of, of individuals who have the virus are what we call asymptomatic. They, they don't have the, the symptoms that are typically classified as someone who's very ill with the virus. And uh, so they don't know and they um, go around and, and because they don't know is they infect others. And so that's a, a large uh, reason for why the outbreak is, is so, uh, it, so large and it, it does wax and wane uh, dependent upon um, how many people are uh, infected and, and who they come in contact with. And uh, we, the VA has a fourth mission, which is uh, emergency uh, management. And early on, we were asked um, by the governor to assemble teams to go into um, not only state facilities, but also private sector facilities across the state of Florida to assist where there was outbreaks, to provide education 
um, on infection control procedures to the staff uh, to provide um, what we call uh, uh, instructions on proper donning and doffing of, our, of personal protective equipment because we learned that some people were getting infected because they were taking out off their, their personal uh, protective equipment uh, and, and coming in contact with the virus. And um, we had uh, two teams that were two teams of six individuals on, on the team who were um, going out to various different uh, nursing homes um, across the state of Florida and other the other hospitals within Vision 8 in Florida were doing the same thing. And um, we helped um, three state veterans uh, facilities, one in Lake City, the Jenkins facility, one um, in St. Augustine, the Lassen facility, and one in Panama City, the Sims nursing home, where, where they had outbreaks. And uh, we went in and did testing and uh, we, we took in um, about 40 positive uh, uh, Corona-19 patients from those different places. Um, and um, we, at the start of the pandemic, we went and looked at all of our inpatient capacity and we expanded our inpatient capacity in, and uh, for, for what we expected to be uh, high numbers of, uh, of veterans uh, coming to us with with COVID, and um, uh, we um, we that did happen. At one point during um, uh, late July and August, we were running an average of about uh, 49 inpatients that had COVID um, across our two medical centers. Um, as of this morning, uh, we have 25 uh, between Gainesville and Lake City. And as, as I look back over the past couple of weeks, um, about three weeks ago, we were running an average daily census of COVID-19 patients of about five. So again, it's it's on the it's on the upswing. Um, we um, developed through our pathology and uh, laboratory chief a testing platforms uh, to uh, to identify. Uh, people that had the virus and um, it was in the beginning there wasn't a lot of testing platforms and we had to send our tests off for for verification to California and we also were sending them over to UF and so it was taking uh, could take uh, five to seven to nine days to get test results back and that was it uh, was a little bit difficult because you didn't know whether someone um, had the capability of spreading the virus or not. Uh, but we're, we um, are in very, very good shape through the efforts of our, uh, of our pathology and laboratory chief, Dr. Robert Allen. And we even have uh, one of the tests that can identify uh, between the, the symptoms of flu and uh, the COVID virus. And so I would encourage everyone to get their flu shot because we've already seen patients uh, that have COVID and have, have flu. And that's not really a good combination that that you want to want to have. Um, because we it was in the beginning, as we looked out at trying to control the virus, one of the things that we did, we were only seeing emergent or urgent patients in our in our outpatient clinics. And um, so we relied very heavily on what we call VVC or tele telehealth. And um, uh, we uh, did a great work in, in establishing telehealth and talking to veterans to get them established so that they knew how to how to use and, and how to do telehealth much like we're, we're talking here in zoom that's the the same kind of process and um, at the end of our uh, fiscal year which was the end of September we had uh, 54,000 almost uh, 55,000 veterans who had at least one appointment using the virtual capacity. And uh, certainly that was uh, something that we had uh, used and identified and adapted, much like you guys and, and gals have uh, to continue your, your meetings. We, had, uh, we have a very uh, innovative group in, in terms of ideas um, that uh, we design and, and work through and then put in play. And um, 
one of the things pre COVID, we had someone from our ICU who came up with uh, the idea of having automated chest compressions, meaning that you didn't have to, a person didn't have to do the chest compression. So we bought uh, a number of machines for both Gainesville and, and Lake City uh, so that that uh, these chest compressions could be automated. And uh, that was certainly very good uh, for, um, for COVID because it limited the exposure that our employees and our staff had uh, to potential aerosol generating procedures for which uh, people get infected with, with the virus. Uh, one of our docs in the ED came up with a, a plastic barrier that he had designed to put over a patient when they're being intubated. Um, as you can imagine, when someone's intubated, there's lots of uh, aerosol generating droplets that are that uh, come out. And uh, so this his design uh, limited, again, limited exposure um, to uh, to the virus. We implemented things like drive up uh, 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 testing stations. And we're in the process of sending out um, test equipment to all of our locations so that every site is able to uh, to do the testing um, for, for the virus. And, um, and, and that's very, very helpful. We had driving through services like pharmacy pickup, prosthetics pickup, um, and we have cardiology clinics uh, to check out uh, patients, uh, pacemakers, and, and many more. We've already had a um, what we call a, um, a tabletop exercise for, um, for vaccinations and what's going to happen when there's a vaccine that's going to be able to be distributed. And so we've, we've already game planned uh, what we're going to do. Many of the things that we're going to be doing for, um, for the vaccine, the distribution of the vaccine, are some of the things that uh, we developed uh, with our COVID response. Um, the, you probably have, have heard about the, the Pfizer study that uh, says that there's a, a very high rate of, um, of success. Uh, that uh, that um, vaccine requires two inoculations at a certain time period and also requires that the, the vaccine be kept at minus 70 degrees. And so um, there are some, some challenges that we have in finding these these uh, freezers that are that uh, go that low in terms of uh, keeping their product, but uh, uh, we're we're told that uh, we're going to be the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Department of Defense Department are going to be very actively utilized uh, in the distribution of the vaccine, and so um, we're we're ready to to do to go whenever we get the the opportunity uh, to do so. Um, we have um, a lot of projects going on in our healthcare system, and um, certainly two that are, are very uh, helpful and impactful in, in the Gainesville market are our primary care clinic and also our mental health clinic, uh, which have just recently been approved uh, for uh, for the area that we're going to building and build them in, and so we're we're anxious to get started. I believe that uh, we were approved uh, yesterday by the St. John's uh, Water uh, Water Management Group, um, so that we can begin clearing that land and then start start our construction on those two particular sites. And we anticipate that the uh, Gainesville Primary Care Clinic is going to be completed in June of 2022. And the same thing for that mental health clinic. And that's really important for us to move those, those two functions offsite because um, our healthcare system is, um, even with the addition of the new bed tower and some of these new clinics, is still about a million square uh, feet of space short um, in terms of the number of, of veterans that we treat. We just opened a new clinic in, in Valdosta and also in Middleburg. And uh, we're constructing one, another uh, a VA clinic, uh, outpatient clinic in St. Augustine. Uh, we have one under construction in Ocala, uh, the two in Gainesville that I mentioned, and also an, another clinic up in, in Jacksonville. As we're a large system and, and we're growing. 
um, and uh, veterans come to us for care because um, they know the, the type of care that, that uh, we're able to provide and uh, we're appreciative that they trust us to, to provide their health care. And so um, Veterans Day, which is tomorrow. And um, so it's a day when together we pause to reflect on America's veterans, the country's best men and women who have served and sacrificed while wearing the uniforms of our nation. Those who have defended our country in times of both peace and war. Uh, their veterans are ordinary citizens who accomplished ordinary extraordinary things for all of us. They were the sentries who guarded our representational democracy. Um, there are our brothers, our sisters, our aunts, our uncles, our neighbors, our friends, and colleagues. They're individuals and veterans that, that came back from their service and, and got engaged and involved in the community to make it better across, across our country, and in, in particular in, in Gainesville. And so there's about uh, 15,000 um, of living veterans here in Alachua County. And um, every, every one of us is a beneficiary of, uh, of their accomplishments, their vigilance and their valor. And so for us at VA, um, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege um, to represent a grateful nation in keeping the faith and the promise of uh, President Abraham Lincoln, who said in his iconic second inaugural address that uh, he charged us to care for him uh, who shall have borne the battle for his widow and his orphan. And uh, that's certainly true back then and it's true back now, but it, uh, one of the things to, to know is our women veterans uh, population is rapidly expanding um, our total out of that 137,000, probably about 10% of, uh, of our total population are, are women veterans and, and that's, that's growing. And with it comes different uh, services that are required to treat female veterans. And we're, we're grateful to do, th do that. Just a, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, um, a, sh a baby shower for, for veterans, for female veterans within our system. And I think there was about there was uh, just over 60 female veterans who at that particular time uh, were pregnant and, and about to give birth. And, and so we had uh, a program where they could drive through and we were able to give things like diapers. And, and um, I, I know this because I, I, I passed some of them out, onesies, they're, they're uh, pajamas for, for kids and, and, and car seats and, and play pens and, and those kind of things that uh, that young families are going to need for, for their children. And it was, uh, it was a very uh, wonderful thing to do. Um, those items that we passed out were donated by businesses in the Gainesville area. And so we're certainly appreciative of that. And it was really a moving um, thing for, for female veterans when they drove through to receive those items. And so uh, certainly VA is not a static organization and does a lot of different things to adapt uh, to the marketplace, adapt to the needs of veterans. And um, in the Mission Act, we, uh, we provide a lot of care in, in the community uh, in terms of what we call um, uh, access standards or, or distance standards so that veterans don't have to uh, drive, say, from Jacksonville to Gainesville for particular services. We're able to, to have them receive their care in the community. And most recently, we've just expanded the caregiver support program. And that was a program that initially was put in play following and during um, right after 9-11. And essentially, uh, the program was for uh, veterans who were severely wounded um, or injured um, after 9-11. And um, within our healthcare system, um, we probably have about 500 um, veterans who fit into the caregiver support program that was implemented after 9-11. And what that means is we provide education and training, we provide a stipend, we, we provide respite for, for those family members who, take, who are taking care of those veterans rather than, than having them uh, be institutionalized or hospitalized in a nursing home. The family takes care of them. And so um, 
starting in October 1st, that program was expanded and it, it went back in time to the, to the end or the beginning of the Vietnam era. And certainly there's um, thousands of uh, veterans within our catchment area that we're going to be able to provide services um, to that, that meet the, care, the new caregiver requirements uh, for, for the time period and those who have been um, injured um, post, uh, well, at the beginning of Vietnam and, and then after. We've also expanded educational benefits. So uh, a lot of uh, veterans receive uh, educational benefits following their service. And we have, we have uh, relationships in play uh, to help veterans that are going to school at UF or Santa Fe or, um, or uh, North, North Florida or FSU, um, um, uh, FAM, any, any of those organizations were we're engaged with to provide assistance. And um, we have uh, been very, very actively involved in suicide prevention. And we have a lot of different programs that we put in play uh, to identify veterans that um, have the potential for, for committing suicide. And uh, we have uh, uh, programs put in play and we have apps that have been developed um, there's some things called uh, PTSD, uh, PTSD coach that anybody can can access. It's available through the App Store or COVID Now apps that are very, very good uh, for for veterans and others to, to look at to cope with with some of the things and some of the challenges that that we have facing us because of, of COVID and, and, and other things. Uh, one of the one of the things that we've learned is that um, if you see somebody that's struggling, uh, please in, engage them with someone or ask them if they're okay. We've learned that just the intercession of someone uh, having a conversation with someone who's contemplating that final act is in many cases enough to, to, to stop them from, from doing it, uh, from initiating the act. We've given out thousands of gun locks and, and made uh, compacts with with veterans and their families that they won't use a firearm to um, to take their life, and uh, so there's just a lot of engagement to try and reduce suicide um, and suicide prevention. And a lot of it is developed through VA's research programs and their their um, proven um, we call them. Um, evidence-based practices that we use in our mental health programs for veterans uh, for, for their care and treatment, and they're proven to be effective and to work. And um, our, our population at, uh, our work population is at, um, in our system is about 30% veterans. So um, there's, uh, for those that veterans that are employed with us, there's another added feature of um, taking care of their fellow veterans. And uh, that's the same uh, for all of our employees. We say that every day is Veterans Day and we, we work to, to do that um, each and every day. And so that concludes my remarks and I'll be happy to take some questions if you have any. Thomas, we are, we're actually running a little tight on time, and I, I want to take this opportunity to uh, extend a great uh, Rotarian thank you and a round of applause for a great presentation. I know personally I am thankful for the VA here in the community and your leadership, and uh, thank you for sharing with us today. Um, this year's theme is Rotary Opens Opportunities, and, uh, you know, not to be cliche, but thank you for the opportunity to share. And we have a theme coin that I'd like to send to you as a token of appreciation for sharing with us. And thank you, Tom C. Capella, for um, organizing today. Thank you. Great presentation as we honor our veterans this week. And, um, you know, as a club, we have an opportunity uh, moving into next week, we go from honoring veterans this week to next week's presentation, Service of Us Self. And that's an opportunity to recognize uh, someone in the community that has 
lived out the rotary motto service above self and we'll have that opportunity to recognize them next week as as past president chad king will lead that presentation uh thank you for visiting rotarians today thank you live in person thank you for past district governor mike dara for zooming in with us today uh tom and i tom always hooks me up with some really good quotes and today we both picked a similar quote and i think we did uh tom collette that is I think we did because we, you know, Rotary, people of action, right? So today's quote, as we wrap up, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. John F. Kennedy, Rotarians have a great week.